God like you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for redeeming us. As we go into this worship session, Spirit of the Living God, we ask that you have your way and glorify Jesus.
hallelujah is our heavenly language. Our Father and our God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for another opportunity to gather here today. We are grateful for life. We are grateful for all that you're doing for us. Thank you for another faith clinic. Thank you, Father, Lord Jesus, for another opportunity to hear your word, to share your word. Father, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, use me as your vessel today. Father, I reduce so that you might increase. Speak through me, touch lives, change lives, win souls for your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. Amen. 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 I welcome you all to another wonderful evening, another faith clinic brought to you by the healing balm of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Balm in Gilead. Um, kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notifications of all our weekly programs, Digging Deep, Faith Clinic, and our Sunday services. Um, please endeavor to like and share as well. Uh, do not hoard the gospel of God. Do not hoard it, you know. Let everybody share in this good news. Share to your loved ones, your friends, and family. Let them partake in this blessing. Amen. Thank, today marks the beginning, the commencement of the family weekend. Hallelujah. The family weekend. Uh, this is a unique calendar in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, set aside to celebrate and honor the family. Praise the Lord. Um, this year's team for the family weekend is Heaven on Earth Family. Heaven on Earth Family. And our topic for today is the Heaven Conscious Youth. The Heaven Conscious Youth. You know, the family comprises of the father, mother, the children, you know. And um, today we are specifically talking about, we want to reach out to the youth. What we are discussing today, what we are talking about is heaven conscious youth. And our text is taken from Colossians 3, 1 to 2. Colossians 3, 1 to 2. I quickly read, since you have, raised, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Colossians 3, 1 to 2. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. So who is an heaven conscious youth? We want to know that. Who is an heaven conscious youth? Heaven conscious youth is a young person who lives in alignment with biblical principles, with their hearts and minds set on eternal life, and a desire to please God in every aspect of their lives. Um, in all circumstances and situations, the life of a heaven-conscious youth should project Christ in every situation. You should be like Christ. He or she should exhibit standard behaviors that will provoke unbelievers around them, friends around them, you know, to know Jesus Christ and to accept him as their Lord and Savior. You know, you're supposed to project Christ. In the school you go through, let people see Christ in you. You know, amongst your friends, let people see Christ in you. That's an heaven-conscious youth. You know, you know that heaven is your goal and you have to live a life of holiness here on earth. Um, the other day, I was having a conversation with my son. Um, you know, we we're just discussing about distractions uh, that the youths are facing nowadays. All other influences, things that our youths are going through, especially in Nigeria, the social media issues, you know, the lack of morals, you know. Um, this get-rich-quick mindset in the life of all our youths nowadays. The laziness, you know, in the life of all our youths. Some, some of them are just exhibiting, you know, 
laziness. There's no, they don't want to work hard. They want to, you know, we're, we're just discussing generally. And it was, it was like, what, what can one do to set, you know, you don't have to follow the crowd all the time. You know, you know your right from your wrong, you know. What can you do to set you apart, you know? How can you set yourself apart from? So we were just discussing generally, and I was giving examples. Then my mind went to 1 John 2, 15 to 17. 1 John 2, 15 to 17, which says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world, from, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. You know, it, it was, I, I think I didn't share this passage. I would have loved to. When he comes home, I'm going to share this with him, you know. You should, all these things should not be your priority. It's, it's difficult, we know. It takes a lot of intentionality. It takes a lot of dedication. It takes a lot of focus and hard work to live as a youth nowadays, you know. It takes a lot. You know, you have to work twice as hard. You have to close your eyes to a lot of things. Uh, you know, this is not easy. We all know that. But it is worth it at the end. Because heaven is your goal. Heaven is what you're looking at. It's not what is on earth. Heaven is your goal. Um, so today we're going to treat some traits some qualities of, that you should be found in an even-conscious youth. Qualities that should be found in an even-conscious youth. A sort of guideline, you know, if you're even-conscious, what and what and what you should do or people should see in you, you know. Um, number one, I uh, it's, uh, number one is going to be, you have to set, as a youth, you have to set your minds on things above. We read, we just read Colossians 3, 2, uh, which says, uh, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. You know, set your eyes. You're not of this earth. You should know that you're not of this earth. Your, your, your goal is heaven. Heaven should be your focus. So all these distractions, all this, it's not easy, but you just have to make up your mind. You just have to say to yourself, I am a child of God. All these things do not matter at the end of the day. Heaven is my focus. So you just have to live and abide by this. You know, seek, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. And may God help you. Um, it says here, a, a heaven conscious youth focuses on eternal things, not just the pleasures or challenges of this world. You know, prioritize spiritual growth, heavenly rewards, and living in the way that will honor God. We should prioritize that. As a youth, as an heaven-conscious youth, you should prioritize all those things. The second one is, the second trait or quality is, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Um, Jesus was teaching in Matthew 6.33. He said, but seek his kingdom and is righteousness, and all those things will be given to you as well. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all those things will be given to you as well. A heaven conscious youth seeks to prioritize. Like I said in the first, you seek to prioritize God's kingdom and his righteousness. All else, everything will fall into place. You know, he's speaking to us as parents as well. He's speaking to the youth. Learn to prioritize things that are of God. You know, when you seek God first, it will add on to you. You know, our youths, um, they are after <laughs> get rich quick. They are after money. They are after fast things and all, you know. But it's, it's, at the end of the day, it, you, you probably fall into the wrong hands and things might go southwards from there. But when you look at God, when you seek God, when you think of, you know, before you make any decision, it's God. You talk to God. Before you, you know, before you do things, you talk to God. And always prioritize your, your, your inner circle. The people that you, you, you surround yourself with is very, very important as a youth focused on heaven. 
you seek the things of God, you know, anything that is of God, you, you run after it, you know. So um, the third point here for someone who is heavenly conscious, the truth, you must pursue holiness. Pursue holiness. First Peter 1, 15 to 16 says, um, but just as he called who, as he, he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Our father is saying here, our God is saying here, Jesus is teaching us here that we should be holy as he is holy. You know, a heaven conscious you strives to live a life set apart from sin. You know, you try as much as possible to run away from the things that will cause you to sin. You should always reflect on God's character in their in their actions, in their actions and in their decisions. Always, you know, double check your decision. Always double check whatever you in whatever situation you find yourself, always double check this. What am I doing? Is this right or wrong? You know, I would reiterate again, surround yourself with godly people, people that can call you to order, you know, surround yourself as a youth, surround yourself with good mentors, people that can influence you in the proper way, people that you look up to and people that do the right thing, you know. So surround yourself. So when you want to, you double check your decision. When you want to take a decision, when you want to take a step, you double check it. And is this right? Is what I'm doing right? You know, am I doing the right thing? Will God be pleased with me? With doing, if I do this, will he be pleased with me? Um, number three of the point here of being a, a qualities of a heaven conscious youth. Number three. Be an example, a youth, an heaven conscious youth should be an example in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Be an example in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. First Timothy 4.12. Here Paul was instructing Timothy, a young believer, to be an example to others, despite his youth. First Timothy 4.12 says... Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. A heaven conscious you to model godly behavior, standing out as a light in a world that often lacks this virtue. You know, you just have to like I said earlier, it might be, you, it takes a lot of intentionality, it takes a lot of dedication, and it takes a lot of focus. And it is hard work. I will not be here and say it is easy, you know, especially for our youth. You just have to set yourself apart. If heaven is your focus, you have to. It is something you have to do. You have to set yourself apart, you know. And Timothy is an example here. Paul was telling him, set yourself apart. You know, um, but heaven conscious youth, like I said earlier, should model godly character, godly behavior. You should behave in a godly way. The next point here, I think number four, if I'm not uh, wrong, uh, the point says resist conformity to the world. Resist conformity to the world. Romans 12:2. Resist conformity to the world. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may provide what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It all boils down to your character, your behavior, how you carry yourself. You know, when you're, you're uh, behaving in a certain way, they, they might want to ostracize you. Your friends might look at you that this one is always holy, holy. But you just have to, you know. Heaven is a focus. Just think of, you know. Go to God. Tell him, God, help me. Help me. As a youth, I want to make heaven. I, want to, I do not want to conform to the standards 
of this world. I do not want to confirm to... to uh, uh, the, the other day, I was also chatting with my son about TikTok. That do, uh, not everybody on TikTok is dancing, and some people are doing godly TikToks, you know? So you, 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 because somebody is doing something you want, you, you do your own, and people will follow you. Set yourself apart. Do not conform to the standards of this world. Do not conform to what others are doing. And do not, you know, do not listen to gain, gainsayers. Do not listen to people what they are telling you. That ah, this one, you are too holy, you are too this, you are too that. Set your standards and you will, you will, people will follow you. When they see that you're not compromising on your faith, when they see that you're doing the right thing at all times, people will follow you. You know, do not conform to their standards. Do not conform to the standards of this world at all. Um, another point here uh, for an even conscious youth, another tweet, another point, um, says, serve others and live with compassion. Matthew 25, 34 to 40. Matthew 25, 20, 34 to 40. Serve others and live with compassion. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Serve others. Jesus teaches that serving others, especially the least of the society, is like serving him directly. You know, uh, a youth, the youths are our future. They are the ones we are looking up to, to, you know, take over whatever we have left them. Hopefully, we'll give them a good legacy to follow. But we have to teach our youths how to serve. They are, they should serve before they, you know, a leader is supposed to serve. These are the leaders of tomorrow. So they are supposed to learn how to serve and serve with compassion. A heaven conscious you seeks to live out his calling, offering help, love, and compassion to those in need, knowing that their acts of service reflect their commitment to Christ's teachings and bring eternal rewards. So our heaven conscious youth, they should serve. They should learn how to serve. They should not be, I want to be a leader alone. They should know how to serve. A servant makes a good leader. So in all that they do, Christ is teaching us here, you should serve, you should love one another, you should help the poor, you know, you should have compassion. A lot of our youths nowadays, they do not, they lack this thing they call compassion. It's really, it's really scary. It's the youth that would, you know, they, they just say things anyhow. They are not compassionate at all. Uh, our youths of today, and it's quite scary, but we will continue to pray that God will take over their hearts. God would help them to be compassionate as Christ was compassionate. Another point, um, you know, grow in wisdom and knowledge of God. And heaven conscious youth should grow in wisdom and knowledge of God. Second Peter 3.18 2 Peter 3.18. A heaven conscious who continually seeks to grow in their understanding of God's word and his will for their life. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Grow in the wisdom and knowledge of God. Read your Bible. Learn the word. You know, study the Bible, seek guidance from your spiritual mentors. You know, like I mentioned earlier, surround yourself with godly mentors. You know, you need them. You need them at this point in time. You need them to grow. You need your godly mentors to grow. I apply biblical wisdom in every situation. Like I said, you should, they should always double check their decisions. It's very, very compulsory. Double check your decision. Don't just take decisions blindly. Double check and say, ah, I'm a child of God. This decision I'm about to take. Do not let anyone pressure you. Do not let anyone put you in a, a, you know, put too much pressure on you that you have to be this way or you have to be that way. The Bible is there. You know, when someone is telling you this way, you go to the Bible and you tell them that this is no, this is supposed to be, this is not supposed to be. Uh, look, at, look at Daniel. 
you know. Uh, we will get there pretty soon. Daniel was, he did not compromise. He was not ready and he said it. He stood his ground. I am not going to compromise. I am not going to eat the king's meat or whatever. I will not. It is not, I would stand, I would not. Whatever you want to do, do. I would not do this. And it never compromised. So our youth should try as much as possible not to compromise. And before, for you to, to be able to stand and not to compromise is when you know, when you know, the knowledge, when you have knowledge in the word, when you know what God says in the word, when you want, know what God says in the Bible, then you will not be able to compromise, you know. So our godly, our even conscious youth should try as much as possible not to compromise their, their faith, you know. Um, there's another point here, spiritual discernment. Heavenly conscious youth should have spiritual discernment. A heaven conscious youth develops spiritual discernment, understanding what is right and wrong in a world filled with temptation and distraction. Mm. They are mindful of influences, whether from media, peers, or culture, and seek guidance from God to make choices that honor him. Wow. You know, I do, we've just wrapped up all this, uh, our preaching in one word. You know, let me repeat. A heaven-conscious youth develops spiritual discernment. Understanding what is right and wrong in a world filled with temptation and distraction. They are mindful of influences, whether from social media, whether from TikTok, whether from Instagram, you know, whether from your peers, your friends, or culture, and they seek guidance from God to make choices that honor him. A heaven conscious, you should always seek to make choices that honors God. You should always try as much as possible. I will continue to say, double check your decision. You know, don't go headlong into making a decision, you know. Double check it, you know. Make choices that will honor God. And as you do this, may God help us. May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So quickly, um, this, your, your youth or whoever in your, your child or your youth around you might be saying, ah, this, all these uh, uh, qualities and characters are difficult. But we have examples in the Bible that you can show them and tell them. People that did not compromise. People that, you know, even... They were, the, the, the pressure was much, but they stood their ground. People like Joseph, despite facing hardship, Joseph remained faithful to God and resisted temptation. This can be found in Genesis 39. His focus, Joseph's focus was on honoring God, even in difficult circumstances. You know, he honored, he, he said, no, I would honor God. I would not misbehave. When Potiphar's wife gave him on a platter of gold, he said, no, no, this is wrong. I will not misbehave, you know. He, he stood his ground, and God helped him at the end. Um, another example of heaven conscious youth in the Bible, Daniel. I mentioned Daniel earlier. He refused to defile himself with the king's food and remain faithful to his belief in God, even when it was dangerous in Daniel 1. When they said, uh, uh, the other time, they said they should not pray. That when they go and go, they see, if they should not pray to their God, that they will be sent to prison and all that. He prayed consistently, and he was willing to face the lion's den, rather than compromise his devotion, his faith to God. These are youths that stood their ground. Another youth, Timothy. Though young, Timothy was an example to others in faith. And conduct under Paul's mentorship, he became leader in the early church, and lived a life focused on spiritual growth and service. So these are guys, like I used to say, these are guys that did not compromise. They stood their ground. They stand. They stand, Gidiba. They did not allow any distractions. You know, even you know Joseph did. I said, no, I don't need this. I don't need this right now. You know, he told Potiphar's wife. He ran. You even run away. It's better. You run. When you're faced with that temptation, go away. Leave that environment. You know, do not let anything make you compromise. You know, Daniel, he stood his ground. 
He said, I will not take of the king's meat. I will not. It is wrong. Timothy also. These are examples of guys that stood their grounds. So um, your youth might say, how do I cultivate heavenly consciousness as a youth? Major number one, you should stay connected to God. Make prayer, Bible reading, and worship central to your daily life. Stay connected to God. Make prayer, Bible reading, and worship central to you. For you to stay even conscious, for you to be able to withstand all the influences coming here and there. Read your Bible, you know. Pray. Pray to God, help me, help me. Take this temptation, I don't want this. Open your mouth, talk to your God. And again, have good mentors. Surround yourself. I keep saying it. Surround yourself with good people. Surround yourself with godly people. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. You know, as a youth, focusing on heaven. Seek godly models. This is it. Seek godly models. Surround yourself with heaven-conscious believers. Those that are going on the same journey with you. Surround yourself as a youth. You know, when, when you... There's this... Uh, I don't know if I'll say it well, Yoruba proverb. Uh, anyway, but it says, it, I think I'll just paraphrase. It says, when uh, a sponge is, um, the soap and the sponge are together. So the soap will integrate into the sponge. So the, the, the person, be, I hope Yoruba people will help me. I hope I've not messed it up. The sponge and the, the soap would integrate together. So people you surround yourself with, there's no way. It will filter into you. The way they are behaving, it will filter into you. So may God help us, may God help our youth. Um, stay focused on eternity. Always remember that heaven is your goal. And may God help us as we go along, as we do this. As our youths focus on God and focus on eternity, focus on heaven. May God help them as they make these decisions in the mighty name of Jesus. Conclusion. A heaven-conscious youth lives with their heart fixed on eternity. Striving to follow God's commandments resist worldly temptations, prepare for Christ's return. By developing these godly traits and following biblical examples, they can live a life that honors God and reflects a deep, eternal focus. May God help our youth to focus all their minds. Let them know that heaven is a goal. Everything on earth will pass away, but they should think of their future. You know, you should, you should think of where they would live eternity, where they would live at the end of the day, you know. They should not let anybody distract them. They should not let anybody influence them to go the wrong way. May God help us as we, as our youths comply to this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I would want us to quickly pray. Um, but before we pray, I want, you might be hearing this, uh, youth. And you're wondering what are we saying at all? What is all this, what are we talking about? We are talking about God. We are talking about eternity. We are talking about a heaven for conscious youth. Where do I want to spend eternity? And you're asking, how, how, where do I start? What do I do? Um, we are calling you. We are making this altar call for you to come. And um, when you hear us, come to God. Come and accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Come and accept him. And all other things. He said, seek my kingdom first. All other things will follow. All other things will follow. As a youth and you're saying, I'm confused, how do I go about this? You know, come to God. Pray to God. Ask him to help you. Ask him to save you. Ask him to, to touch your lives. Let there be a turnaround for me. Change my life. Help me to make the right decisions. It's not difficult, and it will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. I have prayer points here that I want to pray especially for our youths. Um, please let us pray for all our youths. Let us pray. Let us thank God for the lives of all our youths in our family, in our church, and in our nation. Father, we thank you for all our youths. We are grateful for the youths in our families. We are grateful for the youths in our churches. We are grateful for the youths in our nation. We are thanking you for their lives. We are thanking you for how far you've taken them. We are thanking you for your protection over them. Thank you for all that you're doing in their lives. 
Thank you for strength and vitality. Thank you because our youths are alive. They are healed and healthy. Thank you, Father, Lord God Almighty. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have given thanks. The second prayer point says, let us pray that our youth will have the fear of God. You know, our youth will be able to put God first in all they do. Let us pray that our youth will have the fear of God in their hearts. They will be able to put God first in all they do. And they also will have a first-hand experience. You know, when you tell somebody about something and he has not experienced that person, it will be a bit difficult. Let us pray that our youth will have a first-hand experience of God's love in their lives. It will not be, my mom is telling me about Jesus, daddy is telling me about Jesus, that uncle is telling me about Jesus. They will experience God. They will experience Jesus first-hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray that our youth will have the fear of God. They will put God first, first, first in all that they do. And they will have a first-hand ex experience of God in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us also pray that we will have a generation that submits to Christ, a generation that submits to authority, a generation that are heaven focus, a generation of youths that are looking unto God, they are submitting to God, they are giving God all their all. They are giving God everything. You know, let us pray that our youth will be submissive. They would trust God. They would give God everything. They would tell God about all the decisions that they need to make. They will put God first in everything that they do. Father, we are praying for a generation of youth that will fear you. A generation of youth that will put you first in all that they do. A generation of youth that will have a first-hand relationship with you. A generation of youth that will submit to you. And also submit to people in authority. We pray for compassionate youths. Father, help us, O Lord Jesus. Let our youths be compassionate. Father, we pray that our youth will be compassionate. They will be loving. They will honor their parents, we pray for youths that will honor their parents. Youths that will honor authority. Ah, youths that will not be flippant. You know, they will just do things anyhow. They do not consider, they do not care. Father, we pray for a caring youth in this nation, caring youth in our family, compassionate youth in our nation, in our churches. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Once again, I want to make an altar call. You're just getting through. You're hearing this message for the first time. You just stumbled on this message. And you're saying, what is this? Um, We're inviting you to, you know, come into the fold of Christ. Come into the fold of God. It will make things easier for you. You know, um, numbers will be scrolled on our screen for people to call. You know, you can call them and talk to them and they will guide you. They will guide you. They will guide you step by step. They will hold you by the hand and guide you in the way to go so that you will not miss it. You will not miss heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So it's time for our offering. We call upon the uh, voices of joy. Please, our account numbers will be scrolled on the screen. Kindly um, put your offerings in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the token that your children have brought into your coffers. We pray, O oh Lord Jesus, that you bless their offering, grant it increase, bless them, bless the pocket that give, grant them increase on all sides, grant them greatness in all that they do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayed. Please let us listen to BIG News. BIG News. <laughs> We welcome
welcome you to church and thank God for bringing us into the month of November. Our prayer for you is that the Lord will cause you to enjoy extravagant grace in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Brethren, if the Lord has done something great in your life, it is high time you come out and testify because by doing so, you're uplifting the faith of people around you. Now, if you like to share your testimonies, there are three ways you can do so in Balm in Gilead. One is physically. If you love to share your testimony physically, please see Assistant Pastor Tobe Chuku by the Saturday preceding the Sunday you want to share. Or you can send an email to testimonies at lccgbig.org or a short video not more than two minutes please to the same email address or by whatsapp to 70 we appreciate everyone that took time to be part of this month's holy communion service which took place on tuesday the 5th of november we pray that the change you have experienced will be permanent in Jesus' name. Our mid-month virtual midnight prayers will take place this week starting from Tuesday the 12th of November till Thursday the 14th of November. The time as usual is 11.30pm till 12.30am. Our theme for this month is Grace to Win. Join us on YouTube or watch out for the Zoom details on all our platforms. Our monthly divine intervention program for the month of November will hold on the 30th of November 2024, the last Saturday of the month. The theme is Protocol Breaker 3. The venue will be on site here in the church auditorium and also online on YouTube. Have you heard about Vision 2032? Please listen carefully so you can be part of it. The Redeemed Christian Church of God Vision 2032 40 million membership mandate. The church has experienced a series of waves that have spurred the church to new levels of growth. As the church continues to march on, we are gearing up for this new wave that will usher the church into a season of exponential growth. The mandate is the responsibility of every son and daughter of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. The vision to grow the church to at least 40 million members by 2032. What is your responsibility to this great mandate? One, Operation 111. One person brings one new person to church and ensures he or she is established in Christ and settled in church. Two, pray daily for the salvation and establishment of souls in our parishes. Three, Follow up on your invites as well as new converts until they are established in the church. 4. Use your social media and every available platform to talk about Christ, the church and our programs. 5. Help people get to church each week. Provide transportation or give towards it. I will be part of this new way, God's great mandate to His church, the redeemed Christian Church of God. What about you? We thank God for our nation and we urge all of us to keep praying for peace in our country as well as for elected and appointed officers in line with God's will based on 1 Timothy 2 verses 1 to 3. If you don't have a house fellowship that you attend, kindly visit our website rccgbig.org. Click on Data Center and navigate to the House Fellowship tab. You will see a list of House Fellowship Centers. Kindly pick one which is close to you. Now for those watching online, you're not left behind as we see you as well. So if you're worshipping with us online for the very first time, please slide into our DM. Tell us your name, your numbers, your prayer points and be rest assured that we will be praying for you and praying with you. We want to use this opportunity to thank everybody who has been giving generously and supporting the church in this season despite all the challenges. And we also want to say a big thank you to you for being a part of today's service. We hope that you were blessed and we also look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Thank you for listening to BIG News today. Praise the Lord.
Hallelujah. Um, as we draw to the close of today's faith clinic, please let us pray. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for speaking to the youth specifically today. Speaking to our youths, our youths in our family, youths in our nation, youths in all our churches. We are grateful for another opportunity to listen to you, to listen to your guidelines. How you know you how you would help us to live a heavenly conscious uh, uh, how you would help us as heavenly conscious youths to do the will of God at all times. Father, we are grateful for all that we have learned today. Father, we thank you, Lord. On behalf of all our youth, we are saying thank you. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, King of Kings, for all that we have deliberated upon today. Father, we pray, oh Lord Jesus, that this generation will be a generation of youths that fear the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. This generation will be a generation of youths that are conscious that heaven is the end goal. Generation of youths that are compassionate in all that they do. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for all that you have done for us, all that we have heard today. We give you all the glory. We give you all adoration. We say thank you. We honor you. We glorify your holy name. Blessed and blessed be your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Shall we say the grace? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom.